Lisa probably going to say it was probably a lie, right? I'm gonna make you mine. There's something special about your love. I think it's one of a kind. Oof. Alright, what's up people? So as you can see the sun is blinding me, but anything to get you guys a good shot. Lisa is getting some much needed sleep. Um, I don't know if you guys have watched the last vlog where she mentions it, but unfortunately, Lisa still sleeps like we have an infant with like four hours sleep, even though Kellen is sleeping through the night. And partially, this is down to her trying to do her thing with the vlogs and still trying to keep around my schedule, that's the night schedule, and trying to use the time that she has when Kellen is sleeping, which is usually that night time, so she doesn't get a lot of rest. And then when I'm off, unfortunately, she's trying to allow me to rest. So it's not like as soon as I come off from work, she just says, okay, you know, um, you get up with Kellen. I try, I try my best to try and relieve her of that, but it happens. In any case, all of that explanation to say that you guys are gonna be riding with me and Kellan. We're gonna go pick up something to eat at not the best place ever, um, Taco Bell, but not the worst either. And I did forget something at Aldi's, so you'll probably go shopping with us at Aldi's real quick. I won't make it too much of a long shopping vlog just because one, I know you guys miss Lisa, but also um, with the time change and just the days being shorter, I don't want to spend the whole daytime in the store. And it's already like four something probably right about now. Yeah, let's get it going and come back and get to enjoy the rest of the day. Kill and get a little bit of outside time even though it's from outside of our house and inside to another building. But it is what it is. And maybe if we can come back in fast enough amount of time, we can maybe go for a family walk. Fingers crossed, let's get in the car. I'm getting all them coutrements. All right, Baba, let's, let's hit the road, bro. I wish you guys could see the joy on his face I was watching this garage door go up. Yeah, so the thing is, so Lisa has been spoiled with her bougie self into always having a key that opens the door. Another thing that she's not a huge fan about the car with is not only does it not have a key fob, but it uses like an old school like turnkey to get into the car. And because it's not the highest end model, the stupidness with that is it also makes it where you can only get in from the driver's side. So that's super annoying. We're going to get that fixed in the car. We have the key fobs. We bought another key. Got right now we're bouncing around with the one key, which is just playing with fire, asking for the key to get locked in the car at some point. Anyway, this is the first drive of the SUV since it's been fixed. Uh, that's a whole not a drama but we finally got it back um took it to a mechanic that we actually trust um so shout out to my mechanic ash yo you're the best and yeah man anyway let's hit these streets Boy. enough talk time to Boy. drive okay so we're in the car now it's always funny when you don't turn on the camera for a couple of days you always feel like rusty as if like you lost it or something a little weird nerves thing here boo boo Close the garage. That is his job, is to close the garage. I'll catch up with you guys from in the store, because I think the plan is I'll probably hit the store and then run and go get the Taco Bell, which I don't want the Taco Bell to end up becoming dinner, especially because we have some exceptional dinner, some, some lamb that Lisa made. Um, but it is what it is. We'll see how it works out. I just literally have one thing to get in Aldi's. What I was going to complain and be and moan to you about was the fact that it's it's weird because I was already into like collecting things and I'm not a prepper but like I found that like subculture interesting. I feel like if you have a toddler or if you have a baby you're already kind of in the prepper category and you don't know it because just to hit the streets just to come out of the car with your kid and, and be prepared for all situations you kind of already have to be a prepper you know what I mean like you have to have like like the diaper bag, a change of clothes in case something happen, some food for him, some drinks just in case you end up getting, you know, in case Lisa call and say, yo, stop at Home Depot or go here or there or whatever and be prepared. Then you need to get yourself together and you spent your whole adult life just being prepped. And that was already a task for some of us, just to put on a clothes and make sure so you don't leave your wallet or your phone or something. So now you're doing that for another human being and trying to move on time. Like us trying to go to church is going to be, 
no pun intended it's gonna be hell on wheels because one of the things that i told lisa before we way before we had kids is lisa will leave herself just enough time for her to bed put on her clothes and leave the house she inherited that very much as much as she's annoyed by hearing this from her father her father will sit down lisa won't sit down and procrastinate when her father ready to finally get ready him get ready and him ready to go through the door that second so there's nothing that needs to stop him at that point and lisa never take the always running late thing lisa has always done that and then when it became me and her going to church i added my procrastination into that plus trying to find things to fit and all of that which is a whole next drama um to go to church so now with kellan and you have to get kellan ready and have to have all of the stuff for kellan to be ready it is going to be a challenge and adjustment in life as remember for the first two years of kellan life we have not been going to church we've been just watching church online so now this like trying to reintroduce physically going to church is going to be a challenge anyway we hit the streets so i'll hit you guys up from aldi's okay so we're back in the car and we didn't go to aldi's it looks like we're actually going to cancel that trip to aldi's we just stopped at publix and needed to get well i didn't need but i wanted to get this um simply fruit punch thing to make more of my drink because i think tonight i want to film on rbs me and lisa have a lot of things to discuss and not in a bad way not that like we need to talk way but anyway so yo you know editing these videos what is funny i find that i say um lisa says i say anyways a lot and now i realize that i say it and so a lot as well as right so you find all the little conversational idioms and they are they drive me nuts because the more i think about them the more i end up like involuntarily doing them they come in like ticks so yeah we're on the way home now i think i'm gonna scratch that just go get the taco bell and go home because ultimately as much as the aldi strip aldi strip is not anything that is something that needs to be taken care of today i decided yo i'd rather go home and we'll all get to go for a walk maybe even make it to the park we're gonna head out to taco bell right now get something to eat and then make it from there so see you guys when we don't drive <gasps> Wee. 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 <gasps> so as you can see i'm hands free which means we picked up lisa me i'm lisa we're in the park doing a little bit of family time see you guys What's up my people? Good night. So it is late night, which is prime time for us. Kellen is upstairs, probably slowly going to bed. Because he's been sleep trained and he's used to being in bed alone, if he's not exhausted, he'll sit up in bed and sing and count and do these things before he goes to bed in the dark. Anyway, so I realized something. I've never really shown you guys the prep for going to work. So I work what they call a 3-3 for my non-healthcare working people. That means that in the two week pair periods, I have to work three scheduled days each. 3, 3, 36 hours. So what I usually do with my 3-3 three, three schedule now to combat burnout is I put two days together and then I move one day to be by itself. How that aids me is if in case I ever have to work overtime, I only have a max of maybe two days touching or I never really have like three, four days touching or anything like that. Unless like I have to go on vacation or something and then I kind of burn it out. Cause by the third day, I know people that do choose to do it that way. They put all three days, they hit Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday early or they just do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, knock it out. By that Sunday, I am burnt and like I almost never want to return to work and I don't like leaving work with a feeling like I never want to return here schedule part aside what I will do is the more prep that can go into going to work is the more that I just have to deal with the things that I can't control which is the workload the patients that come in just how the night generally goes I don't have all that much power over but anything that I can have power over like for example meal prep I try to make sure that we knock that out so no Lisa is not trying to cook right before I'm going through the door and she's not stressing out and having her most like stressful hours right before I go to work. We can just kind of chill, have, you know, talkative time and all of that and just kind of relax before I go to work. I'm not packing lunch the day I go to work. I'm not trying to wash clothes 
for you know work and all of that stuff everything is already kind of laid out taking out all my stuff like it kind of soothes me and relaxes me to know that I'm, I'm ready so i pack two days worth of lunch out one that i put in a bag and then we'll put in our outside fridge and the second one in the actual lunch bag and then i just set it and forget it i don't have to think about anything else so let me show you so there's said lunch bag and right here so will be one lunch this will be another lunch now it might look like i have a lot of stuff and probably too much junk food to be fair all fair criticisms but one of the things that i do is i kind of overload myself when i go to work because if i carry exactly what i would need over the night what ends up happening is i get there and then i don't feel for what i have and then i'm either tempted to go to the vending machine or i just don't enjoy myself not having options so i try to give myself options realistically on a rough night maybe i just go in there and just have the yogurt or just the fruit or something like that or just the meal and nothing else gets consumed and i carry back whatever it is and you know kind of mix and match for that also i had a really good preceptor shout out to my boy jacob he got me a gift for the night what i'll do is i'll carry this and try to get through at least three is the goal for the night of these and that's outside of anything else that i consume so that goes in the bag anyway comment below let me know what you guys do for preparing for your work week even if you're not in healthcare, maybe this is still something that you do that gets you calm, gets you ready for your work week and stuff like that. I will always say, even though 12 hours seems very long, the idea of having 24 hours after two days of work and knowing that I only have one more day that I have to work out the week is the type of lifestyle that makes it, no matter how frustrating nursing gets, no matter how frustrating healthcare gets, and there's a lot of frustration in healthcare. Trust me, we're gonna have an on our BS sit down um, which would be the two nurses sit down. We're gonna talk about healthcare, we're gonna talk about a bunch of things. What do you do to get ready for work, to keep down anxiety, to keep down any kind of pressures and keep yourself stress-free? Let me know uh, because this is just how I prep. The next day. What's up everyone? Good morning, people, people. So, all right, so we're actually going to hit the road. I go for a joy ride. I wanted to take Kellen out to the house before the nap. I have work today. All that aside, we're about to hit the streets. Now, it is a weird time outside for Floridians and Caribbean people. It is like in the 70s, which most people are like, oh my God, that's the best weather ever. And it is, as long as you're out in the sun and you get that nice little cold breeze. But anywhere covered right now is freezing to us. And I know you up north people that's not cold that's not cold listen it's freezing to us 80s uh -oh. oh diaper change see you guys all right so we're in the car now at least we're almost in the car now gonna head out we kind of turned this drive out into like a makeshift like just run and quickly do some returns and stuff but either way we're just gonna go for a little drive do a little exploring and come back and i'll get some rest today is saturday so it's Lisa's rest day. Lisa doesn't do any editing and that stuff and I really want her to stick to that. And of course, as we implement, we probably will start trying to go to church um, as we find a church up here. Which is something that I think we um, really didn't take into account with moving. Like you have to go to a couple different churches, try them out and see if you like the vibe and, and all of that. Because there is, you know, well, what is the cultural diversity? It's how comfortable are you? There's a lot of different things to take into account. Or they could run just marathon long sermons. And let me say something, Let's I grew up streets. in churches like that. And I guess that's honestly the norm when it comes to like churches. You reach church for 11 o'clock or 10.30, 1 2 o'clock. And that was rough for me when i went to our like church home church at nine o'clock 11 30 would end and it was a full service you have sermon and children's story and praise and worship so i like that and it's hard to find that apparently moving ready we still don't know what the market officially will be next year of this time we we'll have, have our predictions exactly we have uh, feelings we have people in the financial sector who advise us you know we're blessed to have people that work in banking and finance and real estate that have 
giving us their point of views. We follow YouTubers that are experts as well. And we're kind of just gauging where we think the market is going to be next year. And watching the trends, you know, like yeah. look on uh, yeah. real time Zillow and you know, you can have your, what I will call out people for being dishonest type of mm. realtor saying like, mm. there's nothing happening in the market. I mean, the price values are going up, mm. but then you're looking at everything is price drop off the market price drop price exactly. drop um, motivated seller all of these different like yeah. little things and again like just to interject we are not experts by any yeah, means I have a minor in business administration Dan was a realtor so we are pulling our personal information that you know yeah. our studying of how market trends can be so you know not only are we going to experts we are using our expertise as well Use it to AI them. I'm yeah. driving on the streets mm -hmm. and I remember when you could tell that the builders were like just building houses and they could, you know, they had people lining up yeah. fighting over houses. So um, I should have filmed it, but I, you know, it is to be respectful as well because somebody was working. Yeah. But there was a man outside of our neighborhood with a Lancia sign, sign, new home sign, you know what I mean? which was and a rarity because we were, we moved to Orlando in an era where people were lining up and outside of homes like people didn't have to make it like you put on a realtor and people were lined up for Without an open house hours, with their masks like, homes yeah. pending now there's all these incentives to buy and all of these different things so you can see that they, they can pretend all they want but the market is definitely changing and we are also changing our finances are at a certain place that we're trying to get ready that you know in a certain time frame that we are ready to purchase where the market will be and we have to say well would we do anything to be in this ideal area mm. and take like any old yeah. house in this area because you can take an older home yeah. and know that like if you have the time the energy the finances again to just to mm. buy a home as well as renovate a home go ahead do it for what is best for us and for our family and for our legacy that's what's most important is to be able to say that we're making the right choice yeah. so if it's Ponciana and it's a 1990 home versus a dr phillips and you're getting a 19 80s or 1970s home and you have to renovate it and bring things up to code it could be is it a new construction that like oh. a, a year into the new construction people, there's a crack in the formation people, of this and doing all kinds of stuff i need you to do your research go on youtube go on tiktok so when i say go on youtube there's some older people like older generation people that'd be like oh on youtube where are you get what are you getting information from youtube i'm watching actual news from around the nation put in like news like housing market by watching something from Arizona mm -hmm. and then Las, uh, you know, Nevada, Las Vegas, Nevada about the housing markets and these new construction homes that people are finding like cracks in their foundation behind the drywall. There's crazy and things going say, on. Yes, I am a TikToker. People going, oh, yeah. you watch TikTok? Experts My are TikTok. on TikTok. It's not all dancing nonsense mm -hmm. on it. That yeah. They make it seem like it's only for these yeah. young, young kids and there's all dancing trends. Mm -hmm. You can definitely bury yourself in that. Definitely. But I come across home inspectors and mm -hmm. yes, they're doing yes. self-promotion, but there's guys showing you like, look at this, and showing brand new houses that are in the 0.5 million. Mm -hmm. like, these are not cheap little houses. These are okay. so, expensive so time homes. You heard what he just did, right? This is his new thing. He wants you to understand the gravity of how expensive homes are. So you will hear him say 0.4 million, right? And it is a $400,000 home. But why are you saying 1.4 million, right? Yeah. When it's uh, $1,400,000. Stop yeah. respect for my $500,000, $600,000, $700,000. dollar So when you say 7. it that way, when you say it that way, million people dollars. are like, wow, that is a lot of money. Yes, you know, that's they have a, just spend it. You know, they have a tendency to be like, oh my God, it's just $650,000. It is $0.65 million. You know, like, yes. I don't know if it's grammatically the proper way to say it, but yeah, so yeah, yeah. Friend. He's still out here, guys. If you haven't watched that video, okay, support him. 1792. Yes. My boy is out here doing him thing. And him have cars lined up. Driving along the street here, as I'm seeing for sale sign, for sale sign, for sale sign. If it's not the land them trying to sell off, mm -hmm. is is the house them trying to sell? In places that I didn't even know there was a house behind those yeah. trees. But the market is changing and like I said, we are using the expertise that we have. We're using the resources yeah. that are out there, but we are not like boo-boos when I'm it watching, comes to this yeah. prior to like Dad and I being together. 
but I purchased my first home and um, it was the Great Recession, right? And you know, if you want to say that I had, you know, family kind of pushing me to be like, oh, now is the time. But I saw the trends. I picked a house, and that was became the home that we brought Kellen home to, and all that, and ended up being a home that we can sell to make this dream happen. This is not a joke thing, you know. You're spending your hard-earned money, and then. What was the second thing now? No? At least I probably going to say it was probably a lie, right? <laughs> you already say it? That's funny. And the second point is, remember also another thing that people seem to forget is that when the Great Recession happened, I'm not saying everything is going to be like 2008. It's not going to be a replica of the yeah, same exact thing. Just because World but War One, but the signs one, are one, lining up, though. Yeah, you, you still had a second World War. They just just was fought for different reasons, mm -hmm. right? So, what I was pointing out was the Great Recession happened in about 2008, but the ramifications in the housing market and those things wasn't felt for another year or two, yeah. and even I three. I purchased in three, three years after, like so, that. Yeah. Yeah, like 2010, yeah. 2011 is when housing market really started to feel the crumble of, yeah. of said recession so don't feel like just because we enter in recession now and you don't see the houses immediately drop out to the bottom that we yeah. have hit the bottom of this market yeah. or don't let anybody tell you that house values can't now don't sit around waiting like oh yeah. well you know it can go lower it no, can it go lower no, yeah. don't get greedy yeah. Just like the people that wanted to sell at the top of the market, getting three hundred percent more than I so I bought it for. I, but no, I can get four hundred. No, don't do that. That's all I'm saying because most of the time they're saying that because something that they don't want to happen. So we will see when we get to where we're going. We're not really sure where we're going. I think Dan kind of explained that we're just kind of exploring, and I feel like we used to do this way more often. Maybe we got used to like a little settled, but we still want to explore areas you know like that is our duty like to ourselves is to know like oh this looks like a nice area frequented you know often like we've gone to dr phillips eaten in dr phillips shopped in dr phillips gone to playgrounds in dr phillips so we've we're comfortable with that area but we cannot just kind of lock down on one specific area around dr. Phillips, though, you know? get spin around two times no I, I don't keep saying this and then every time we go there he's like oh yeah make this turn make this turn no, you know the, oh, oh, there's a like a perimeter, perimeter area perimeter, that yeah. yeah but then in actual and yeah there's that seem familiar and there's, from getting there's lost, areas yeah. that like connect i think you're in the same neighborhood and then you're like wait we just passed this how did we yeah. get here so yeah for sure that we there's moments like that um but again we don't want to get fixated on a specific area we do like that area a lot we like schooling we can list the reasons why we like that area mm -hmm. but we have to be open to the possibility of um transitioning to another area prior to um oh, yeah. getting to that, yeah, you to know get into that area all right bye guys Love, i think it's one of a kind there's something special about your love i want it all the time